So the project originally started because um, I have a hypermobile Ellis Sandler syndrome myself and I went to some patient conferences and events um, and was chatting to other people with um, the condition Ellis Sandler syndrome and also hypermobility spectrum disorders and um, people were saying well you know I was quite hypermobile, flexible, um, but fairly healthy or, you know, managing it okay before. And then I had a child and now I'm in a wheelchair or my condition really exacerbated. Um, so we were thinking, like, well, I wonder what's going on there. And so I was speaking to a few other people and one of my colleagues who's a GP, Dr. Emma Reinhold, and we were chatting and thought, well, this is really something that we should look into. So then I went to my colleague Sally at Coventry University and we were having a chat and um, Sally's a midwife and I said, you know, have you come across this in your midwifery practice at all? Um, and she said, you know, no, <laughs> not at all. It was some rare condition that I thought, um, you know, I'd never heard of and I would just refer someone to a specialist really for, for something like that. Um, but I thought if there really is this problem with um, disability affecting people who are just having babies in yeah. this way and there's nothing we can do or know about to help them, then there's really an re area of research there we need to look into. Um, so it was a multidisciplinary team really that came together yeah. and, and, and sort of said, okay, what can we do to resolve whatever um, is going on and, and help people better? And me as a midwife, you know, I'm always looking for ways to improve maternity care, improve practice, and there just seemed to be nothing for this group of people. We so started with a review as well, which was something we just wanted to know what was out there, what <coughs> evidence already existed. And um, we thought, right, okay, well, let, let's have a look. And, and we, we worked on that and we did um, a publication on that. And it really took off, didn't it? It did, and it's not just about looking at the evidence, but actually applying it to a real-world scenario. Yeah. So how would that evidence work in, in maternity care? And once we published that review, we realised it was actually being used um, in patient notes, in women were taking it to mm. their provider, showing their GPs, getting diagnoses, um, before and after and during pregnancy. And one person even said that they weren't going to have a baby, but because of this paper, they were now thinking that they were brave enough to go ahead with that and empowered to make their better evidence-informed decisions, really. Um, so that's where it started, and then we, we did more work following on from that, really, didn't yeah. we? Yeah, and the great thing is, as well, is it's not just the women, it's also the midwives. They're saying they had more confidence to support women, um, and it just, it was really good. And we went on to do um, some interview studies, and we put out a tweet, one tweet, and within 24 hours, we had over... My inbox was full. Yeah, just over... T just 200 people saying, I want to be in this study, hear yeah. my story. And um, with qualitative research, hearing people's stories, you really can't have that many people uh, included because it would just be masses of data. Mm. Uh, but it was really great to hear 40 people's stories about how they had um, their childbearing experiences with hypermobile Ellis Danlos syndrome. And now we're planning to hear much, many more voices via like big international online surveys where everyone can have a voice very easily and we can collect that kind of data and hear everyone in on, in on this, this work really.